guys and welcome back to my channel okay so today i'm going to be showing you guys two different ways to cover your cake and front net yes so it's left for you to choose whichever one is convenient for you different bakers find different methods um easier so the first one i'm going to show you is the overhead method and this one is like the easiest to do but this is not my favorite though but this was what i used to use this was what i learned to read and this was what i used for years more than six years actually so and this was what i used to cover this cake and even though it had tears it became perfect at the end of the day so i'm going to show you guys how to do that right now so what you want to do is you make sure you need your fondant and it is well needed and it is very pliable yes that's the kind of fondant you want to work with so even if it's already made fondant yeah make sure you take it and knead it for at least two to three minutes or two to five minutes and make sure it's pliable and soft and it is drawy and easy to work with yeah so don't just go straight to taking it out of the pack and using it if you want a video on how to use already made fondant i'm going to put the link right up here for you it says click on me yeah click on that yes because you can just buy fondant and start to use it like that immediately okay so what you want to do in this overhead method is to put some cornstarch or your potato starch on top of your mat and then spread so spread your um your fondant however it's convenient for you <coughs> excuse me spread it however it's convenient for you some people say spread in whatever they like don't spread it in one direction don't spread in several directions i find Cake decoration is more fun if you do it how it's convenient for you. You find a way to do it and it still looks nice, even though it doesn't look like someone else's one. It still looks amazing based on what you want and what you do. Okay, so spread it how you want and then spread it really big. Make sure you spread it to um, a diameter, like twice the diameter of the cake you're covering. For example, the cake I'm covering is about 18 centimeters and this this um fondant that i already spread is almost 40 so spread it and lift it lift it immediately and put on your cake don't make don't like leave it there for and go and come back because it will dry out and then it won't it start breaking when you cover your cake so immediately you spread lift it and place it on your cake and start to like um to you know spread with your hands so what you want to do now is start from the top when you start from the top it doesn't start to tear down downward because gravity does this thing and like pulls it downward so you want to make sure you do this really fast otherwise it's be pulling downward the reason why i don't like this method i don't really i used to like it but this is not what i use anymore is because like gravity draws it downward so like there are some parts where there will be tears based on like you're pulling it downward and the fondant is stretching only that i don't know if you can see that tear part yeah there are tears in it and usually when i use this method there are tears in it so but the good thing is i know how to fix tears so if you want a video on how to i already made a video on how to fix tears in your fondant in case you have them so you can check that out in case you have any of those okay so this is the reason why i don't really like this method because it tears basically <laughs> when it's going downward it tears but when you're done you want to make sure you smoothen it and then like take your turntable and your um smoothener and try to do the top and like the top and try to smoothen as much as possible in my case i like to get sharp edges so i use two smoothness to give myself sharp edges so i really do like it <laughs> okay so this was me after like i already like covered up the tears and i already gave it sharp edges so if you want a video if you want to see the video on how i did that click right up here it says click on me and see how perfect the cake came out this was the cake and you can't even know like it had tears yeah so this is the first method it's called the overhead method a lot of bakers prefer this because it is easier and i think it is faster as well okay so i'm going to show you guys the second method right now and it is called the wrapping method so this one you're going to cover your cake in two batches and this is i think this is my favorite because it gives you the better better result and it doesn't tear okay it tears if you don't do it well but it hardly tears basically because you're going to be rolling and lifting and it gave me this white and red cake right here see how pretty it is yeah and you, you can't really know the difference once you're done covering your cake like they both look well covered like there's no difference basically but just depends on what's easier for you okay so let's start this method this is the wrapping method and we're going to be covering in two parts so what you want to do is take a piece of your fondant and then roll it out in, like in a round position and then try to cut out like a uh, round that is as big as the, the top of your cake that can fit on top of your cake if that makes sense so take your cutter and then cut it out so and then take your cake make sure your cake is close to you so you don't lift too far and then it starts to stretch and make sure it is wet i like to wet it with some water and my food brush so and then place it on top and then smoothing smoothen it with your smoother so what you want to make sure you do right now is make sure it is well stuck to it and then take um, a razor i have this manual razor that i use 
I don't know some there are different brands you can buy so I buy it from bookshops you can get them in bookshops and everything I make sure it's new and usually when I use it like I buy it it's disposable like you can replace it so I buy the replaceable razors too so that when this one is dirty because washing it makes it blunt and you want it to be really sharp so when this one is dirty I just throw it away and replace it with another one and they're very cheap they're less than 10 to than one dollar <laughs> I'm sorry okay so what you want to do at this point is to cut out the excess by the side and make sure like you're cutting it so well that like there is no disparation between the cake and the fondant you covered on top here make sure it is very close and it is well neatly done okay so once we are done with this yeah you want to like roll out another piece of fondant in order to wrap your cake that's why it's called the wrapping method okay so what we want to do right now is take another big piece of fondant yeah remember we divided our fondant into two parts yes take the other part and join it to the remnant that you had and then roll like in a cylindrical shape here you want to roll like a log so once you're sure like your log is long enough to in case you're wrapping your cake for example my cake is 18 per 18 centimeters so you're going to have to like do some maths in this basically <laughs> So like know how long like wrapping your cake would be the perimeter of your cake. How long is it? Yeah So yeah, that's how long you want your rolled fondant to be So for this one right now, I've spread it out and I've spread it in the shape of like what I'm trying to cover So I'm going to take out the piece the extra from the side so it can be easy to roll So once you're done rolling like this and you're sure it's flat and it is long enough for what you want to cover Then you're going to take some cornstarch or some potato starch in my case like Cornstarch is expensive in Ukraine, so I use potato starch. So take some of that and then just spread on top of the fondant. And the reason why you're doing this is because so that when you roll it around your rolling pin, it does not stick. I don't know if that makes sense. So take some potato, just a little, and then spread it on top. Because we're going to roll it around our rolling. We're going to lift it with the rolling pin itself. So we're going to roll it like a scroll, basically. <laughs> so you want to roll it to lift it. Yeah, it's easier to lift this way. And make sure the side of your cake is already wet. Any part that is not like already dry, take your brush again and go around it with water or with glue, whatever it is you're using. So that your fondant can stick onto your cake easily and it won't stress you out. Okay, so now once we are done with that, what we want to do is take the... The rolling pin and then locate the back of your cake for example this would be the back of my cake because there's going to be a seam and you don't want the seam to be in front of your cake yes so and then roll the fondant around to the back of the cake again so it's going to meet where you started from if that makes sense now it's time to smoothen so take your smoothener and then try to smoothen it as much as possible so i'm going to show you how to make that seam at the back and how to make it as neat as possible so look at that excess at the back i want you to take a scissors and cut out the extra part usually i use the scissors but you can also use this like sharp razor tool so take out the extra there cut out the extra yes and then take some take your brush again in case because you need that place to be wet so that it can really stick so put your brush and some water around this so it can, it can really stick and then try to join the extra fondant to the one at the back and then you're going to use your razor again to cut out the excess where it meets you want to make sure both sides meet and if it doesn't meet very correctly don't worry all you have to do is take your um your smoothener and try to like correct it as much as you can so that you can have a neat seam it's important that even though it's at the back of your cake it's important that the seam at the back of your fondant cake is very neat and almost not visible if that makes sense yeah so i think this method is a little bit more technical but what this method does is that it's easier for you to get sharp edges with this and for me i think it's easier for your cake to be neater there won't be tears there won't be maybe gravity dragging anything down like for me i think this is just easier though <laughs> i learned this on youtube actually i wasn't taught how to do this it was the um the overhead method i used to use before I learned how to do this so what you want to do at this point is smoothening as much as possible and you want to press your smoothener onto it so much that the top of the cake that you covered is touching the sides that you covered I don't know if my English is making sense but I hope you guys understand me and just to make sure that it is just in case some parts might not be so take your smoothener and try to join it together so for this one you need at least two smoothness to be able to do this so take your smoothener and try to make sure the middle joins the sides so that way and remember you added some water to it so it is definitely going to stick and then once it does that we are going to take our razor the same razor that we used initially that's why it needs to be sharp because if it's sharp it makes your life easier and then you can like get really sharp edges if like the razor is sharp and it's not blunt 
so you're going to use really new ones so you're going to cut out that excess the excess fondant on top and see how effortless you effort, effort sorry i'm just saying see see how effortless getting like a sharp edges with this one it's easier for you to get like sharp edges with this one because you're literally cutting out the edges yourself with the razor so like it's a lot easier to smoothen it's a lot easier to have sharp edges and you will hardly like have tears because you lifted it you didn't lift it with your hands like the first one you lifted it with a rolling pin so take off the extra and try to smoothen your cake with your smoothener again as much as you can and just neaten everything up and basically that's all that's all you have to do you don't have to do anything extra and now you've covered both your cakes and this cake came out perfect so this was the result at the end of the day so for both of them you can't really tell which is which they cover perfectly so you guys should like look at it and watch and like practice and try to see which one you prefer so thank you guys and i will see you in my next tutorial